Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Sue. Uh, I have a question for Dwight because I couldn't look it up on my little iPad here. Um, as long as we're talking about pots of money and where things come from and the 58000 to maintain the fields, on the proposed Palouse River Drive ball fields, without the streets and the mm -hmm. sidewalks, right. how much was the city planning to spend on that project? Which day? Uh, <laughs> well, when I mean, if, before if, which city council in the, meeting? In, in the best of all possible worlds, and we're about to go to a bond issue tomorrow, and you left out the streets and sidewalks, but kept the bridge and the rest of the ball fields. Which how much was that ball? How much was the ballpark of that ballpark? Oh, geez, um, I didn't bring all that with me, but um, the road improvements going out to the highway um, weren't that much. So you're probably talking six million. Plus. Okay, and what was the proposed, what was the thought of the maintenance budget for that park going to be? Um, it seems like it was 60-some thousand a year. And on the maintenance, uh, the estimate, that it includes pretty much everything. Um, it was always anticipated that we would work with the different key user groups um, I mean, the Moscow baseball folks, I mean, they have more expertise in maintaining the infields of the <clears> baseball field than, than possibly we, than we do. Um, so we would work things out. So um, it would still cost the same amount. It's just that they would be, diff you know, offsetting the cost with, okay. with uh, their parts. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tom? Um, I guess I feel generally supportive of this idea. Um, I have two sources of concern. And one is I am having a hard time accepting the price tag for the park development. Um, I, you know, going through the, the budget, it just looks, I don't know, it, it, it looks, Difficult for me to understand um, how that piece of property can cost that much money to develop as a park. Um, Seven hundred forty-six thousand dollars of it is furnishings for um, the park that don't necessarily stay with the park. I, I mean, I guess I don't know, um, you know, if backstops stay there or if they move around or if they go somewhere else or if the if the uh, bleachers stay there or go somewhere else and if they should be included in the cost of the thing or if they should have the 8% um, uh, contingency fee go against that or if the guaranteed profit to the developer of the park should be, you know, if that percentage should be um, based, you know, should be um, based on that, those furnishings. So I, I have a, some questions about the development and the cost of the park itself. Um, and then, and it maybe it just costs that much money to, you know, develop a baseball field and, and, or several baseball fields and soccer fields and so forth. And I just need to really like accept that fact. I don't yet accept that fact. <laughs> um, the second concern I have is digging that deeply into the corpus of the um, Hamilton Fund. And, you know, I, I feel okay about, you know, a half a million dollars, you know, going in, at, you know, saying, hey, you know, I can sort of knee-jerk spend a half a million dollars on this thing. But once I get to a million, I'm, I'm starting to slow down on my spending, I think, with this. Um, maybe hearing that the CRAT um, yielded uh, 742 um, at that transfer date, maybe I feel better about going as high as that. I, I, just, I just think we need to be somewhat cautious about spending money, and, and perhaps that's what I'm hearing in Tim's voice with, with what he's saying. So I, I, I'm, I generally like the idea of, of the partnership with the school district and moving forward and making this happen. I just don't know if I completely accept the price tags and the amount of investment at this point 
Um, the general concept, I'm okay with. And so maybe maybe that'll <coughs> flesh itself out more with conversation or with time past today. But I do know that the school district is coming up with a date that they need to figure this stuff out. Right, and you know, you've touched on a couple of points that I, I want to make. The February 26th date of the school board's meeting is is important. We, it's kind of this dance, you know. The city can't be so presumptuous uh, as to assume an outcome. On the other hand, the school board can't make a reasoned decision unless they know kind of the the uh, sentiments, at least, of this the city council. Uh, I did. I had asked Gary to present the information that uh, Don has drilled into our heads over the years about the the importance of the corpus of that Hamilton <coughs> Fund and all the good things we can do with it now and in the future, depending on how it is managed. And I, I have to tell you, without you know making any commitments from the city, it was not negotiation. It was not presuming an outcome from the school board, but. I did touch some, uh, I made some phone calls and talked to some people last week about possible in-kind contributions to make a project like this possible. And I tell you what, the, the outpouring of willingness to help, the generosity, the technical uh, capacity, you know, we're talking <coughs> earth movement, geotechnical analysis, uh, um, hands-on moving stuff around the field and prioritizing elements of this thing. I think there is some value engineering that could happen when it comes to that point, and I hope the council will consider how whatever it, whatever you choose to do tonight to, to recognize that there's some possi real possibility of some help from uh, others in, around us. Let's see who had their hand up first. Dan, was that you? I'll let Wayne go. Okay, Wayne, please. I'm fairly comfortable with a million dollars, a um, million and a half. I'm not comfortable with that. Uh, I would like to see uh, a stipulation in there, however, that if we do get the in-kind service that you're talking about that could defer that million dollars back. Uh, so I guess what I would feel is I would be comfortable going up to a million dollars if necessary. Don't necessarily have to have 30 years, 25 years is fine. If we get enough in-kind service, you know, and the Baseball Association was talking about at the time when we first met, uh, everybody was really willing. Their boy, they're just ready to step up and make this thing happen. And uh, perhaps the city won't necessarily have to put up the million dollars. But I'll support that. Dan? You know, I'm, I will make a motion that we authorize the staff to develop an agreement with the district to participate in the cost of the de development of the Joseph Street Playfields, subject to the condition contained in the attached memo, including, I would say, the participation up to a million and a half, and leaving the length of term at 25 years, with uh, caveat, and I don't know how to word this exactly, but any in-kind contributions would chip away from that million and a half contribution Does that sound doable? I can only tell you from the context of the people I talk to that if there's a million and a half available, then they don't, then we don't need them. Well, if, that, if you're going to pull that out of the, the uh, core of the Hamilton, I'm concerned yeah, that we like might that. not have the ability to <clears throat> secure some of those resources. Be some sweat equity. In I mean, well, I agree that there's got to be sweat equity, but you know, we got we got to make this happen. That, well, well, that, sure. That was a motion. I know. I just haven't heard anything else. Anybody second that? Second. Okay. We have Dan's motion, Walter's second. <clears throat> Discussion? Tim? I'd be interested in knowing whether the maker of the motion and the seconder of the motion would consider an amendment, that being to figure out a way for the city to repay the corpus of, a, of the 100 or 1.5 million or 1 million or whatever it is. You, you can make that. As, a, as an amendment, you can make that, that as a motion, motion yourself. That's or a motion. an amendment to the mm. existing motion on the you floor. Move, you move to amend? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. You heard the motion. Do I hear a second? Okay. Um, Hearing. I'll, I'll second for purposes of voting on that. Okay. We have uh, Tim's motion discussion. and Sue's second. And now discussion on, okay. on that. Um, Sue. I think if we were willing 
in the past to do a six million dollar ball field bond issue and we didn't one of the reasons we would, and it was more than that it was seven seven point eight seven point eight um for the ball fields but we didn't get a lot of support from the uh citizenry <laughs> besides sticker shock but uh this we seem to have a lot of public support for, and I think um, one of the contingencies, this sounds like a real estate deal, but in, in a sense it is, a contingency being that it be a bond, that, that money come from the school district in a bond issue, not a levy, because to me, a levy is getting a little bit of money each year and you don't know how much it's gonna cost and you don't get it all together to do the job right the first time. So this is why I'm considering the million and a half to, is to do the job right the first time. But if we were willing to bond ourselves and pay back bonds of more than the corpus is worth now for the Palouse River ball fields, um, at least this council was willing to, to think about putting that up to a bond issue. We didn't do it because we didn't want to interfere with the school bonds. Uh, with the school district's levy and, and because we know they needed the money. That was one of the reasons um, <clears throat> we didn't go through with it. But so I, I think that this is doable. Um, paying it back, I think, paying it back to the corpus is, an to me, an equivalent of paying it back to uh, the maintenance of the building because if it's 30000 or 45000 a year that we're giving up with the of, with the 1.5 of, of interest. If the city's putting that into the maintenance of the building or the or the pool or the scholarship program or whatever, to me that's as good as paying it back because you're you're paying back what you would have lost in interest. And and to me, if it, the 1.5 versus 6 million, and we would get public support and we would get the ball fields and we would get it done now. Um, I'm, 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 for just points of discussion, I think we can handle it. I think, I think it can be done. So you're looking at me. Yeah, well, I'm I'll looking respond. at you. I want to well, respond. I think this is important. Yeah. Uh, I think reducing the corpus is a mistake without paying it back. I think the money's there to be used for exactly this thing. And I'm going to vote to use the money for what's being proposed. My only concern is that future councils down the road are going to look at that corpus and say, "Woo, where'd all that go? It's 20 and now we don't have it anymore. It's not an advantage. It's not an asset. And I think this council can use the money for what it was intended, and they can pay it back for the future use and emergencies just like this one. So the city is using the money or the interest off of it, They've had it as an advantage and an asset. All I'm suggesting here is that we don't throw that away. If I may. Sure, Gary. Uh, in discussing the amendment, I understand the concern and the desire to pay the corpus back, so to speak. The Hamilton Fund's sole use has been to benefit the Parks and Rec program for children's programs. Okay, it was money that came in unsolicited. Uh, right now, Parks and Rec is supported with over a million dollars of general fund monies every year. What you're talking about doing is taking funding that is specifically allocated to Parks and Recreation, spending it, and repaying it with general fund monies. In essence, what you're, if you take a million dollars, let's use that as a round number, um, the general fund will end up making up the support for the HERC operations, whatever that amount is. In addition, the general fund will make up the $29,000, which is the city's portion of maintenance. So you're going to already see about $70,000, $80,000 that will increase Parks and Rec operations out of the general fund. If on top of that, the amount of the Hamilton fund needs to be replenished with general fund dollars, then that will be an additional burden to the general fund that was not contemplated. So in essence, 
when the discussion for the West Palouse River Drive ball fields was discussed, it was never intended to pay it out of general fund dollars. It was intended, the council had said they would set aside half a million dollars out of the Hamilton Fund, but then a bond issue was going to provide the resulting capital account. So, what you're, with all due respect, it will put an unreasonable burden on the general fund. And I mean, maybe that's something we can budget for or not. To make that a condition of this tonight, I believe I would ask the council to table it. We need a chance to analyze. And I would need to know how long it would take to pay it back. If you're talking about 10 years at $100,000 per year, uh, I might remind the council that the entire 3% tax increase that we're allowed to take by law is about $120,000.